we are. This is the Chickasin Project. Hey everybody, today we're going to do something a little bit different on the Jacobson Project. We're going to have Jake as our guest speaker. Jake is my dad and he owns the 40 next to uh, Kim and I. Uh, Jake and Betty own, own some land next to ours. And I talked in previous episodes about the barn raising project. It's not complete yet. Uh, with, there's quite a bit left to do for finishing and, and details, but uh, it's it's come a long way and and man, you got to listen to him because he's got he's got great input on this kind of thing, and it, it really it really makes you uh, respect the old buildings. And when whenever you can save a structure like this, it's 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 really a cool thing. It's it's like saving history. First, I, I should. Uh have a little disclaimer here and, and just uh, let you know that this is not a, a project for the weekend um, faint of heart because it's, it is a substantial uh, project and uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done and I had a lot of help doing it I have to say that <clears throat> it's dangerous at times it's hard work and uh, very rewarding in the end when you uh, think about um, accomplishing something worthwhile and saving an old building like this. Uh, most people would tear it down mainly because the cost of doing this is going to be approximately, you know, in the range of what a new building would cost. And, uh, that that um, you know, hardly justifies doing it, doing the small uh, details that need to bring it back. Uh, it really isn't economically feasible, and that's why a lot of these buildings are falling, I guess you might say. But anyway, the main, the main engineer to this project was a man by the name of Dennis Winrich, and he uh, was a barn restore uh, specialist. I asked him once, uh, what is a barn lifter called? Because you know, you have your plumbers and your carpenters and your millwrights and your yada yada. What is a barn lifter called? And he said, I think you call him a barn lifter. So he was uh, an experienced per individual doing this. Uh, I have some experience jacking up little sheds and things like that, but uh, a, a building this size, and I might tell you that the building is not that big. It's only uh, 18 feet wide and 40 feet long, so it's a relatively small barn. But still, it, it, it weighs in at, you know, Probably, I'm guessing 30,000, 40,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds, maybe, I don't know, something like that. So uh, there's some weight there, and uh, you have to you have the proper equipment, the right, proper setup to do something like that. Anyway, uh, Dennis was the main man. Uh, other guys that helped on this project, I mentioned their names. Dan Trewicki, he was the excavator. Uh, there was a sand and gravel outfit in our area here that was extremely helpful. When they called, they answered and, and got our material out here when they needed it. The Tony Lumber Yard. And then I'd like to mention Paul, Janet, Serenity, Tommy, Kirby, Luke, and Evan. These are all individuals that uh, stepped up, came out, and did substantial uh, amounts of work to help get this thing back up. You drive across the, the country and almost every state, and you'll see old buildings like this, a lot of old barns, some of them standing and, and repaired and, and still in use, and, and others, many others, just falling to the ground because they're no longer uh, needed or used in modern uh, times. And it, you know, it's just kind of a nostalgic thing to, to when you stop to think about all of the uh, the work that went into building these old buildings in the first place and then uh, all of the work that went into maintaining them and housing animals, uh, making hay, putting up feed every year and things like that. So there's, there's, these buildings represent many, many hours of hard labor and uh, 
So they're kind of a monument really to uh, an age of agriculture and settling in, in that represents uh, a significant uh, step, you might say, in you know how the country developed and things like that. We could go on and on about philosophical things, but uh, we're going to be talking about uh, what I want to talk to you about is uh, lifting the old barn because when we bought this property, uh, we were lucky enough to uh, latch onto a, a nice. We were looking for a nice piece of hunting ground, which we got. But along with that, we got a few little extra added attractions, and one of those was an old house and an old farmhouse that uh, we've since learned uh, was the, the home of a family of seven uh, for the past almost 100 years, and the old fella that owned the place recently passed away at age 94. When we started, the, the barn was on the ground, basically. Um, when we first came here, it was not on the ground. Um, unfortunately, when we began the process of excavating around the barn and moving a lot of the old trees and things like that, some of the tree roots and some of the, uh, the trees themselves were kind of supporting the, the barn. And we were looking more at whether the barn could collapse further to the ground. What happened was we removed some trees from one side and it, the barn was actually leaning against a tree on the south side and when we remo removed the trees on the north side it allowed the barn to pivot around the tree and it, and it fully collapsed to the ground on the west end which happened about 3 a.m. and I heard it uh, happen in the night but um, the reason that we decided to do this project in the first place is because uh, we like the looks of the what was left of the barn. Uh, the roof was uh, in really good shape. It was nice and straight. Uh, it had a standing seam metal roof, which means that the, the roof is made of metal and it has an interlocking seam at all of the joints, which is not common anymore because they are, they're very expensive to build. And the metal that they used back in the day was, was thick, substantial. It's rusted on the surface, but it's still good. So we decided to save it. Uh, and use it. We're hoping to make good use of the lower part, but the hay mow itself too is such a cool uh, architectural feat, if you want to call it that, the way it's built, the way the rafters are put together. The way I understand it, there is a lot more space in a building like this with a Quonset roof per uh, amount of material used. There aren't the big beams that you see in old, the typical old, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, the barns they were building in, they had huge beams, tremendous amount of material went into them. This type of a building, the main selling point, because it was because after the big timber was, you know, slashed off of the land, the timber became more expensive. And so this, the main selling point at that point, at that time, in the late 30s, 1930s, probably is when this style kind of became popular. They were made before then, but uh, they really became popular in the 30s, 40s, 50s, in that area. I think this one was probably built in around 1930 to 1940, somewhere in there is my guess. First of all, the reason that the built barn fell down was that uh, the foundation had eroded away. They used a field stone rocks that were in the area here to, to uh, make a foundation, but back in the day, I suppose, these uh, barns with the round roof, it's got a round roof, it's called a, a rainbow roof. I didn't know that before I looked it up on YouTube, of course, but uh, they're also, uh, they're, they're called Gothic architecture, if you want to be, if you want to be Technical, I found that out too. That's something I learned. The reason I decided to, to do this is I, I really like the looks of the roof. And uh, when we got started, the foundation had eroded away. The wall, foundation walls, which came up on the backside quite a ways on the building, had basically gone away and just collapsed. The roof, uh, the, uh, the hay mow floor and the roof was suspended between uh, some stud work on one side and a few studs on the other side 
and then a, a pillar that had been repaired years ago with some cement that was holding up one other corner. So it was kind of hanging there, suspended. And when it collapsed to the ground, of course, the one end is totally on the ground and the other end was still suspended in the air slightly. So we had a little bit of airspace on one end, but the other end we had to basically crawl in there on our bellies to get the jacks in there that we needed to get the thing started. The roof was relatively straight though, but it was just tilted at an angle. So basically our jacks were, on one end we did a lot of jacking, on the other end we didn't do as much, but uh, we, we jacked the whole thing up to about 10 feet high because I wanted it high enough to drive a tractor into it. We replaced the foundation the old stone wall, uh, broke up all the old cement floor that was in there. was a cement, partially cemented floor and rocks. We broke that all up, carried it out. Manual labor. On top of the foundation wall that we built in, uh, we built a stud wall, two by six stud wall, and, uh, and then set the building back down on top of that. Took out the jacks and, and everything we used to raise it. Now, that's about where we're at right now. So basically how we did it is, like I said, we crawled under there on our bellies on the one end, scooted our uh, jacks in there, and we used 10 40-ton jacks, and we didn't need all that power, but I mean, that's just the size they were, um, placed along the front wall and the back wall. And we built cribs as we jacked these up. These, these jacks would only go like eight inches at a time. And then uh, we built cribs. We used, we used about 300 blocks, crib blocks were six by eights that were uh, um, two feet long. That's what they were. And where we got those is uh, there are pullouts from guardrails along highways. You can, you can buy them and cut them into two foot pieces. A lot of work, a lot of cutting, a lot of organizing. So then you 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 slide these blocks in there. You set it. You set. You put two blocks in there, jack it up, and you put two the other way, and then make a stack of blocks called a crib. Of course, you need to keep this thing level as you go, and uh, <clears throat> so we had a little pocket level. And every time you put a block in, you level it and make sure it's going level. If you don't, you, if you get crooked, you you're, you're going to start putting pressure. In, in some direction that you don't want to put pressure in when you're lifting and, and stuff. So we have some shims. We'd shim a little bit, make sure everything's level as we went up. And uh, eventually we ended up at 10 feet high. And it, it took, um, you know, a couple of three weeks of jacking. We recently poured a slab of cement, cement on the floor. So we have a floor now. And under the cement we put foam. Uh, two inches of foam and, and it's supposed to keep and we'll do that around the perimeter of the outside too And that's supposed to keep the ground from freezing underneath and With the soil that we have here in this area is a clay gravel soil and it's uh, uh, It holds a lot of water and it's uh, Drainage is not real good So freezing can be a problem under a building like that it can have its way with a building and that's why the old foundation collapsed, is because the freezing and the thawing eventually uh, moves things around and, and things begin to crumble. So that's how that kind of played out. And now we have a slab of cement on the floor. We're building a little workshop in one end, and we're going to, you know, with insulated walls so we can heat a small space, and then we're going to use the other end for storing some of our bigger toys. And uh, building's not done yet. Um, Maybe we'll we'll do another little uh, short video uh, after the thing is finished, and the, we're probably going to put metal on the outside and leave the roof uh, kind of weathered and the nice rusty patina, and uh, should should be good for a good many years, I would think. So I'm not an expert on doing this. Um, be careful if you're out there and you want to try it. Uh, you don't have to be crazy, but it really helps. So uh, good luck if you're going to tackle a project like this. And uh, It's been done before. And uh, like I said, the man that helped me, Dennis Winrich, is a
professional. He knows what he's doing and very confident. Um, wasn't afraid, and uh, he's got, he's got a way with uh, with working with these old buildings. He understands the stress and the uh, all of the signs uh, of what needs where a jack needs to be put and what needs to be pulled and pushed and twisted and and gets thing back in shape so I should mention my wife Betty who allowed me to, to uh, do this project in the first place realizing that it's very time-consuming and um, you know it's a significant uh, undertaking we we discussed it and with some some serious thought and arguments and uh, fights we were able to <laughs> come to, uh, to agreement on it and here we are <laughs>